this is a presentation about colon cancer actually this is a very quick review that I made and I summarized it from Cameron uh, actually this is a presentation of nine slides only in which I will talk about uh, general information staging surgery chemo and follow-up actually these these are the informations that you needed to stay one day prior to your exam general information the genes responsible for uh, the colon cancer which is the adenoma carcinoma sequences a k d p AKDP, I made it a mnemonic in a mnemonic that all can do problems. So, in the A stands for in the APC and the K, KRAS, then DCC and P53. So, yes, I changed the letter from C to K uh, just to make the mnemonic. So, all can do problems and you have to know it by the sequence. I mean, from A to K to D to P. Do not mix up the sequence okay the only letter which I have changed is from C to K actually the, the gene responsible which is the KROS that is the only gene which is by its presence you have the the risk to develop the colon cancer but the others by their absence I mean the others by deletion by this one but this one is a proto oncogen which is the KROS you you may have an MCQ about that point that this is a proto oncogen okay six to eight percent is synchronous so what is the importance of that this is a common practical question that if you do a sigmoidoscopy and you find a polyp which is risky uh, so what is your next step or if you found the carcinoma so what is your next step you have to perform colonoscopy the next question after that why would you do colonoscopy in that patient because there is a six to eight percentage of a synchronous lesion okay 20% uh, meets, meets at presentation, just to be mentioned. Now, regarding the staging. Staging, uh, yes, we are following the, the TNM uh, classification, as this is the most common. Now, how you start with, because I know all of you can memorize the TNM staging, but what is the problem? Why I forget that? the key is that how you start with because in t staging for a colorectal cancer that you should only remember that you start t1 that is in the submucosa that is not in the mucosa because after that you are following the layers layer by layer so t1 is starting in the submucosa so what about the carcinoma in the mucosa that is something called uh, intramucosal carcinoma or carcinoma in situ whatever this is not t1 this is the confusing point if you know this you can answer the or you can get the others t1 submucosa so after that the layer is in the muscular properia then after that into the sub serosa and finally into the serosa okay so that is t3 and that is t4 now for the end staging again because you are reading the colon cancer you are perfect in that then you are reading the breast after that you read the stomach then you mix them up, up. okay so in end staging in colorectal cancer you should know only N2 that that is the one or that is the key to to know the others so N2 is four or more four lymph nodes or more four or more so N1 is less than that one two three N2 as as I mentioned to you the rule four or more now N3 is a long major vessel okay now staging we know the T, uh, uh, T and N and M, of, of course, I didn't mention it because this, is, this presentation is made for someone who is senior who can know uh, the points but only to highlight the other points for him. Now, uh, the M, we know, M1 is METS. Okay, so now the staging. We have T and M and Duke's classification. Still, they are asking sometimes about the Duke's classification and you have to know it. And actually, that is easy. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, T and M. If we have T1 or T2, so that is stage 1. T3 or T4, that is stage 2. Any presence of lymph node, whatever T stage, whatever the T status, uh, this is stage 3. And in presence of meds, that is stage 4. The colorectal cancer is one of the simplest staging uh, in comparison to other. Okay, and the Duke's classification, the stage 1, actually that is compatible with 
dux a and after that dux b and dux c so when he asks you about t3 example t3 or t4 that is dux b we got a uh, question about that in one of the mcq's books uh, okay now this is the simple simple one how to memorize it the detailed one which is actually the confusing one and they rarely ask about it if you would like to know it if you would like to confuse yourself just know it it is this one uh, stage one this is the same stage two we have t3 and t4 t3 they mentioned that this is actually a two three. so this is stage 2a and t4 that is uh, stage 2b and after that stage 3 with the lymph node you take the previous stage and you add to it lymph node so t1 or t2 plus lymph node so this is a <coughs> and if it is t3 plus lymph node this is b and if it is t4 plus lymph node this is c now one of the audience will say okay this is easy and i can memorize it so why you are mentioning <coughs> that this is difficult i know it's easy and you can memorize it but i'm talking about after after you uh, combine all the knowledge you know all the stagings all the uh, tables that you know then you would like to re review it you will find that now that is difficult actually so i should go with a simple one not at this moment i'm talking about the moment that you are collecting all the informations together okay now <clears throat> the surgery the surgery actually this is in case of emergency I'm, I'm not talking about the patient you are preparing and doing investigations for him what are the investigations no i'm talking about the surgery in the emergency you have either obstruction or perforation patient is obstruction obstruction and you find in the surgery that that's proximal actually proximal or distal your target is in obstruction your target is anastomosis okay now if it is proximal so you can do the resection and primary anastomosis if that is distal yes you can do the resection but on table lavage you add to it and then you do the anastomosis okay so in obstruction either proximal or distal your target is anastomosis now <clears throat> for the perforation perforation if that is contained abscess contained abscess you can do the percutaneous drainage and you investigate your patient and you do the surgery electively but if that is free perforation or let's say a gross fecal contamination so the safest answer the safest answer is Hartman if someone asks you and uh, what is the what is your next step or what is your procedure just say Hartman if he added to you do you have any other option or any possible option then you add to him resection and stomosis with the proximal ileostomy which is option but don't mention it as a beginning okay so this is a general scheme about surgeries in case of emergency in case of obstruction and in case of perforation uh, <clears throat> and we may have conditions that are not compatible with what is mentioned here and you know the surgery that a lot of conditions can change the uh, decision in the OR. <clears throat> now subtotal or total is there any indication for subtotal or total yes if you have multiple let's say that you have a sigmoid polyp that is high risk and you have another one in the proximal yes you can do uh, subtotal or total colectomy okay now if you are checking for meds in the abdomen what are you checking for peritoneum liver by doing intraoperative ultrasound omentum paraortic and periportal okay now the minimal um, minimum lymph node required for the colon this is should be known by heart that the minimum lymph node required for the colon rectal cancer is 12 12 lymph nodes now the others the others we have also to know the breast we need 10 lymph nodes the colon we need 12 lymph nodes stomach we need 15 lymph nodes okay this is should be known by heart actually if you want to how to memorize it that uh, breast colon stomach this is arranged in numbers 10 12 15 and also it's arranged in letters b then c then after that the s okay so they are arranged actually now post-op enhanced recovery uh, this is practical question post-op enhanced recovery what is re 
Uh, what What do you mean by post-op enhanced recovery? That uh, a lot of uh, items, but few of them, that early feeding, early forest cat removal, and avoid opioids. If you review it in Cameron, it's mentioned in detail, but I try to take few points so at least you can answer. Now the chemo, <coughs> adjuvant chemo, the type Folfox. Folfox, which is a combination of fluoropyrimidine and oxaloplatin. Okay, so that is Folfox. Now the indications. Indications in all stage 3 patient. You remember the stage. Stage 3, we mentioned any presence of the lymph nodes. So, in case of lymph nodes, yes, you will give chemo. Now, so that is stage 3. And stage 2, if that is high risk. So, not only, not every patient with a stage 2, no, stage 2, if high risk. If that is perforation or T4. If that is, now, the three things which usually comes together, poorly differentiated or lymphovascular invasion or inadequate margin. That's why I made it all together. The three usually comes together. Poorly differentiated, lymphovascular invasion, inadequate margin. Okay, and the other is low, a low count node. So you have taken lymph nodes and you give it to the pathologist. He told you that it's actually only nine lymph nodes, not a 12 lymph nodes. So you count it, uh, you consider it as high risk stage two, okay? Now for the follow-up, let's say that we are following up the patient for the five years, okay? For the five years, first, uh, first, by, uh, we'll, first we'll consider the history, examination, and CEA. History, examination, and CEA, all the three together, okay? And we are following the patient for five years. We'll divide it into first two and last three, okay? So first two, first two, of course, you will uh, you will see the patient and you will uh, you will follow him more frequently. So every three months. So in the first two, every three months. In the last three, you are following less frequently. So every six months. So history examination and CEA every three months for the first two years, and then less frequently every six months for the uh, three years. Okay, CT cap annually. Now the colonoscopy, the numbers are easy to, to be memorized, 1, 3, 5. Colonoscopy, 1, 3, 5 years. Exceptions. What are the exceptions? That within 6 months, if not done preoperatively. What do we mean by that? If you have an emergency and you have to keep taking the patient to the OR, <coughs> okay, uh, <coughs> then you get the result that is cancer. So you don't wait after one year. No, you should do it within 6 months. To exclude asynchronous lesion so if not done preoperatively in case of emergency you have to do it within six months now if we add, if we found an adenoma you have to do it annually example after one year I have followed up the patient after one year and I have seen adenoma so I don't wait until three years to do my colonoscopy I should do it after one year because I found an adenoma that is <clears throat> the last slide actually uh, as I told you I try to make it easy simple and fast so everyone can revise it in the last day before exam